Hello, Terry Caliendo of Dedicated Managers here again, and I want to talk a little bit more uh, about this uh, the, the view component of, of this project that I'm working on. And I'm building a database, a real-time database, uh, with for, for local nonprofit foster kinship. And again, I've showed in other videos this um, this prototype for the, the database that I'm working on and how it can react real time with the uh, fire store um, or Firebase um, fire store. Uh, cloud storage um, and how they interact in live. You can watch that in other other videos. How they interact with each other um, real time. Um, so, but getting into the view, I want to start to show what view is and how it differs from the old days of sending out static HTML files. So, in the old days, um, when you load up a website, um, you receive uh, a set of HTML for every single page. Um, so if I was to go to something like, um, let's see, um, well, let's look at Foster Kinship. If I'm in Foster Kinship's website and I view the page source, we see all this um, all this code, and it starts with the HTML, and we have our head, you know, HTML, and there's our head, um, and then we put all our scripts and all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, until we finally get down to some style tags so that we can make it look pretty and then here's the body um, and then we start to see uh, here's the featured slider so you start to see all the different pieces but everything in this code here is just this single page and if I click to like view the about page I'm loading a whole separate set of code so when I go to this view source yeah a lot of this stuff is the same but I made a call um, from the browser over to the web server uh, and the web server sent back a whole new set of HTML um, in order for this page to get rendered. Um, this stuff is the same as it was before so it's the, the stuff that's sent the same but it is sent again um, from the server. So the, the web server um, is, is back and going back and forth between the browser when you change um, pages. So anytime you click on navigation, you're forcing that, that web server to generate its code again and spit it out. And in fact, this is using WordPress. So each time I call that web server, it's doing dynamic stuff, calling a database and actually pulling all of this data and stuff from a database before it then spits it out. So it's doing a lot of work um, just to build each web page that it sends to me. Now, that differs from using Vue as a, um, a standalone uh, single web page application. Now you can use Vue as different components. So I could stick Vue into, you know, just the navigation and have Vue just run the navigation and, and not anything else. Um, but what's really happening on the web is that um, I need to find my uh, my page here. That um, the that Vue is now just a single component that the web server serves up one time and then Vue uses JavaScript to actually kind of act like the server and, um, and, and change the pages and do all that work. So let's take a look at it in code. That might help it make it a little more um, solidified as far as what it is. I know it's pretty abstract at this point. Um, but again, if we look at, you know, this was the, the source code from Foster Kinship. Here's Foster Kinship. I looked at the source code and it's, it, all this stuff came out. Um, but when we looked at the, the code for, um, um, for our view project, um, if I look at the source, my source is very simple. It's just the, telling it to load a document and then call um, this, this JavaScript. And we're going to find out that this JavaScript is going to act on this app div and put the whole website right in that div. Um, and that's what we'll see here. So here in, here's my development environment. And um, so this is the index.html that ultimately gets built and spit out to here. And now a lot of that's done by a lot of things that go on in the back end that you can learn about in other places. Um, it's, it's actually done by Webpack, which Webpack, um, if I, if I want to show you what it is, if we search for Webpack and go to Webpack's website, this is Webpack. And, and what that does is that takes all... This, this guy's job is to take all these different directories and all this co code and, and, and bundle it up into a small package that's minified and, and, and simplified and, and ends up in this app.js. Um, but back to view, 
So Vue is actually started from this, this app. I, I know I'm all over the place here. I got to get back on track. Um, this app.js, it actually starts with the, this, main, um, this main element here. So you can see um, here is the, um, where I import Vue. So Vue is just a framework that I import and it ends up in my code um, as part of the, um, uh, where does it end up here? It ends up in, um, not in build, um, node modules. It ends up in all the node modules and um, you can see this is all the stuff that it takes to make this thing um, work on the back end so that it can simplify and spit out a single page and all the things it does to simplify um, my, our, our life um, as far as programmers go. Um, but what was I looking for? I am looking for the um, for the view source. Um, so we've got to go back all the way down to the PQRSTU if I can remember the alphabet. Um, and then here, here is the view code. So um, again, that's all stored in these node modules and node handles, you know, installing all this stuff for us, which makes life easier. But basically I import that view code into my project and then um, I instantiate it down here by creating a new view object. So um, the, the view object also is told the element and, and where to act, where it's supposed to act. So um, view is supposed to act on the, I, the, the element with ID, that's what the pound sign means, ID of app. And that means that view is going to do all its work on this right here because this has an ID of app. Um, so view gets instantiated. And then the first thing I'm going to do is call its component. And I'm going to call the... Um, the app component and I'm going to put it as a template um, here. So if I take a look at the app.view that I first call, you can start to see the different pieces that are in the, the app. And um, so this is my main container for my app. And then I have a toolbar, which is this piece right here. This is the toolbar up here. And that's actually handled by Viewtify. So now we're starting to see the code mix, um, view start to get mixed with, um, with, with Viewtify, which makes things easier. Uh, and, and here's the content. The content goes in the router. And we'll talk about the, the router and how it handles what it does. And then here's the footer that just simply right now has a copyright 2018. And there's my footer copyright 2018. So these are the different pieces of the page. And view, um, this is, a lot of this is the view code where you start to see the vif, and that's where it lets me manipulate um, what you're seeing based on the variables that are, are in the application. So right now you're seeing sign out, so that means that um, the v, this vif statement, the user is authenticated, is true. So I've, I've run the authentication algorithm um, that, that talks to the database and, and does its work. Uh, and so I'm showing sign out. There's no point in showing sign in um, because the, the user signed in. So this is view doing its work to just only show components and only insert the, um, the stuff that it needs to when the variables pan out and, and when, it, when it needs to. So that gives me app, um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the control as the programmer. So that's a brief introduction. It's very high level as far as, you know, what, um, view is, but it's a framework that lets you control um, your website. Again, um, it, it's a single, this, I'm using it as a single web application, single page um, web application um, right here. You can use it as just pieces of a website, but I'm making it be the whole, the whole website. And then um, in the next videos, I'll start to talk about, um, you know, view, Viewtify, which is this toolbar component, um, the router, which sticks, you know, what, what your, whatever your, whatever's happening here um, is telling the router what to load into the content pane. So my, um, my toolbar is here. Um, sorry, I clicked. My toolbar is here, and that shows up here. And when I change pages, um, if I go to back to the dashboard, this, this toolbar is not reloaded. Now, remember, 
Um, when I talked about the, the old school style, when, when I clicked to change pages here, it made a call to the server and the server came back and it re-rendered the entire page, including this, even though you didn't see it change, the, the new code for this was sent, um, but that's not what's happening in Vue. In Vue, it's just changing the pieces that it needs to change and making the call to get the data within those pieces. And we'll learn about that a little bit more um, in, in upcoming videos. Again, this is the toolbar. So that's the toolbar. And then the, the router handles the content. Um, and, and, and Beautify makes it uh, um, easier to make it look pretty so that I don't have to do all the work to get these shadows, um, this circle with this icon, you know, all this mouse over stuff. And when I click on stuff, how it does that little highlighting thing, um, that's all handled by Beautify to make the, um, the, the project look good without doing much work. All I have to do is tell it to, to do certain things, like here I want a flat button rather than a, a, you know, a certain round button, that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll move forward in the next video talking about some more about the pieces.